This is the dressiest fine bomb and I'll get. Yeah. The entire season. He, he's at SEC Media Days. He's got stuff going on. I got Sports Center. Got a couple of hours. So we're dressed in our adult clothes for our day jobs. We did want to catch up with you, uh, Paul, while you've been down there. I guess big picture. We're, we, we've embarked on the final day. Today is Shane Beamer, Josh Heupel, and Lane Kiffin. But leading up to this point in the final day, what has been the biggest, in your estimation, storyline coming out of Nashville this week? It's really about Kirby Smart, number one, dealing with uh, the -the off-the-field issues. And and I I want to get to that in a minute because there was a dramatic turn yesterday in in some of that. And and ultimately, uh, you know, the quest for the three-peat. And and Matt, the sideshow, believe it or not, was Nick Saban. Uh, He did not command the stage like he normally does. Uh, It it seemed awkward. Uh, Nobody really wanted to say, hey, coach, do you really think – Georgia has passed you. Um, but beyond that, it uh, this has been, uh, and again, there's three more coaches, including Kiffin, so you don't want to speak too soon. It's, it's been a fairly uh, routine SEC media days. Yeah, okay, and there are bullet points I want to get to with a couple of things you just said. Let's start Let's start with Nick Saban first and foremost. Is he at the point, I had him on SportsCenter with me, you, you talk with him all the time, he had the podium yesterday. Is Saban at the point, he's been in Alabama now for 17 years. Is he at the point now where it's, hey, man, I'm going to come here and I'm, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to speak at the podium. We're not going to get anything inflammatory out of me. The, the biggest thing that went around is him making an analogy to his grandma's cake and the carrot cake. Yeah. I mean, is it just kind of where he is at this point in his career where he's like, man, I don't need to come here. Just let's go. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think in reality, he probably would have preferred skipping it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Matt, Matt, I mean, you know that you get really stupid questions from the media. One guy got up there, and I'm, I'm going to quote it verbatim. He said, Coach, my, don't laugh. My name is Johnny Ballpark Franks. I'm from uh, Huntsville, Alabama, and I just wanted to congratulate you on setting the record for the longest coach, longest tenured coach at a certain specific school, uh, 17 years or 16 years. Uh, appearing at media days and I'm thinking like you know Saban we all know seven national championships great right. and I'm sure saying Saban was you know ready to call Miss Terry and go hey guess what we have a I've, 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 I've accomplished something else I mean it was so <laughs> absurd um and and that really that that's even that that's really what it was all about I mean Saban talked uh, talk about situational awareness he started talking about celebrating his 52nd because of COVID, a wedding anniversary, uh, and a three-week tour of Italy. And he said, let me tell you, Florence, I mean, we're not talking about, you know, two days in Rome, uh, uh, you get part of a package, three nights, you know, four nights in Europe for, you know, $900. He said, you know, Florence, Milan. He said, we went to the, the Ferrari factory. Uh, the, the word is that he's about to become a Ferrari dealer and you have to go there and test drive. He's talking about test driving Ferraris. and and then he said, all of you folks, you really should go there. I'm like going, I mean, we got, we got, everybody knows the media business right now. Saban's encouraging a bunch of sports writers hanging on for their life. <laughs> go ahead and, uh, you know, go, why don't you go ahead and consider, you know, taking your wife to Florence for, uh, you know, three or four weeks when you get a break. I mean, it was, it was, it was just so, I mean, it was tone deaf on one level. It was hilarious on the other. That was the most interesting thing instead of my point. I, I find him, Paul, where he doesn't like, he's going to do it in the regular season. He's going to come out with that Coke bottle. He never drinks from on the podium. Right. He's going to get after the media for not talking good about him, And then he'll get after the media for talking too good about him. at this point in his career. To me, he's just up there playing possum. Like, listen, I've got a talented team. I'm going to pick a quarterback. We're going to win a lot of football games. You can say what you want about Kirby smart. You can do that. But and he, I I think he's so secure in what he's done. He he just doesn't care what people think anymore. Well, uh, he, he he doesn't care until somebody criticizes him, which happens very rarely. But that's, that's for another podcast. Um, but yeah, I mean he, I mean there's a routineness to it that that he know he knows he's got everything in in his back pocket. Um, and I mean he he's still is is charming i mean you you talk to him uh he, he can have fun and i think he likes to have fun he always says the same thing at the end i want to thank all of you for you know what a great job 
I mean, there's not one guy in that room that's ever met Nick Saban, Matt. I kid you not. I mean, I, I, I ask Alabama beat reporters all the time, and I, I, there's like a 400 of them. Oh, you know, what about have you had? What, what is your you know relationship with Nick Saban? Well, I've never met. Her. I've never met. Her. I mean, say it. Let's be honest. Saban doesn't care about the local guys. I mean, he <laughs> talks to you. He talks to Herbie. Uh, you know, Van Pelt. Uh, I mean, he is not remotely interested in the local media. What, what are they going to do for, for him? So, uh, you know, but, but he thanks them anyway for, for everything they do for college football. And I always call it the state of the Alabama address because that's really what it is. He gets up there. He dictates the talking points. But, Paul, I would bet if you got him in a room, not as creepy as the one you're in right now, but just a room in general. <laughs> there, there, by the way, there is a dead body behind this couch. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.